We've been talking about sin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A forgotten subject. Yes, sir. Don't worry, I'm not going to rush out and preach, but it's a forgotten subject. Yes, I don't even think that if we keep allowing this new regime of leaders to lead, there won't be a such thing as sin. If you're in the front row, I want you to talk to me. There is a doctrine, let me open this up so I can preach, but there was a doctrine, or there is a doctrine battling the doctrine of sin. That doctrine is called my truth. Maybe I will try to preach. It's called my truth. This dangerous doctrine, and I do need 10 grown-ups to talk to me through this, that the millennials have fostered. And it's not because they don't want to live right, They've watched a generation not live right. This is going to be a hard sermon. They watched their mothers marry their supposed uncles. When he first visited, this is your uncle. Now he's my daddy. Don't y'all duck now. Y'all sit up straight and talk to me. This was your godfather. Now we find out it's your actual father. You told her you loved her and are in love with her, never cheated on her. Then three years later, you told her you like men. And would she still stay? Because you still love her. Now let me let y'all know, it's best to talk to me than I can preach. Because all of these things I'm naming is sitting in this room. And, and it's been in church, I found out now, since I've been born. Except our ancestors hid it a little better than this generation. You flaunt your truth, we use discretion. Sin is, and I feel like I'm preaching, but sin is still sin no matter who does it. But those who do it without a conscience are hell bound. Those who do it with the conscience, there's hope for all of us. Y'all don't want me to preach. That's why it said, if we confess, our sins, and that particular scripture was not written for the sinner. It was written for those who had been converted and yet make mistakes. Now, let me, let me rebuke a self-righteous spirit that I feel a brewing in this church. And it's not from members, it's from visitors. None of you visitors are holy and perfect. Not one of you. If you were married, had children in marriage, but you don't have your husband, you fail. If you kept a husband and your children are drug addicts, you fail. You see, sin is in everybody's house, laying at the door of everybody's house, and it gives us all a job, and that is to continue to be our brother's keeper. Some of you holy parents ran your children away from the church. Because you kept saying they had demons. Why didn't they just have reasons? When I grew up, my, my gen generation, which I have about seven or eight in here, we could take rebuke. 
and we got right back on the drums. We took rebuke, got right back in the choir. We got beat in the bathroom and ran right back out and did our Easter speech. If we, if y'all think we talking about you, you signing, making resignation letters and, and you taking your friends with you, you need to leave the church too. And all of this is because of a bunch of self-righteous Christians with amnesia needing to feel better about yourself by hurting others that are around you. Now, I, I don't want you to lie. This is just you obeying me. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I've got your back tonight. Now, some of you are lying, but I'm asking you to repeat after me. Not that you mean what you say. One of the first particular sins that we read in the Atonement of Print called the Bible states that Adam disobeyed God by eating from the tree. The presence of God then appears. This is a little rehash of Sunday. The word of God walks through the garden and he simply asks him not what have you done. He just says, where are you? I don't hear nobody. Where, where are you? Where are you is a particular question that has embedded within it answers that don't have to be heard. What do I mean by that? Someone's jealous. I feel this. What do I mean by that? It simply means uh, if you come to church and we see you all the time and then we start not seeing you, we are to believe you're doing something wrong or have been lured away by something you should not have attached yourself to. Y'all are quiet. It says that we are lured away by our own lusts. That's why I tell saved women who love God trying to live right, stop dating all these gangsters because you're going to be lured away, by your, lured away by your own lust. He loves me, though. He just don't like our church. He don't believe in all that tongue speaking. We too loud for him. He was born Catholic. Well, you were born saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, tan clapping, tongue speaking. So if he can't gravitate towards your history, why are you all quiet tonight? You know why you're quiet? Because I'm messing with your truth. And I've not messed with it like I'm going to, so hang in there. Rebuke in my generation used to be seen as a tool of love that helped people not make the worst mistakes of their life to set their lives 10 years back. Right. Now, if you use rebuke, you know how this generation sees it, you're in my business. Right. 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 And it looks somewhat like this. I'm not going to act it out, but I need some young folk to help me. It's like, mm, how you know that's right? Who told you? I ain't never said I was dating them anyway. We just friends. Well, friends just don't get friends pregnant. You know, friends just don't send friends to jail friends see ain't no young people clapping they're like right now i need the young people to know i'm not preaching on you i'm preaching to you at the same time the older ones are clapping have done the same thing that's how some of you were born out of wedlock one party smoked one joint never smoked again one glass of wine and got hot. See, the reason why this generation sins different than our generation is we hid the truth. You told them they were born out of wedlock, but you made it seem like it was only one person's fault. See, you didn't tell your children the whole story. And I think the way that we can, I think I'm going too far, but I think the way that we can diffuse passing hypocrisy and things to our children is to man up or woman up and one day sit down and say, I'm going to tell you some things that's going to shake you a little bit. 
Because I've been saved since you were a child, but I ain't been saved all my life. And I need to tell you, it ain't God telling me you smoke weed. I used to smoke it, so I know when I look at you, your lips are dark black from black and mild. You Churches are not getting empty because we're preaching on sin. Churches are getting empty because we're lying about being perfect. I've made it a habit and a hobby, and people may not believe it, that since I've been preaching, I always preach on me. Because if I tell on me, let me give an example, and it's a humor it's, it's, it's somewhat funny. My father, who's probably watching tonight, Aaron Hall Sr., shout out to you, homie. My father, right? No, no, it's all right. My daddy uh, used to work at the school. He was a janitor. He worked at Roosevelt Junior Senior High School while he worked on Wall Street. So my father was bivocational and a pastor. My father did anything he had to do as a real man to take care back then of his three children. And you can applaud that as we go forward. Most of the time, it's the mothers that raise children, but my father single-handedly raised his. So I don't have the same view as women, so I'm hard on women when you start talking about men. Because I don't have that testimony. Right? And my father would show up and, 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 and show up at uncanny times like God was telling him when I was doing wrong. He's supposed to be in Manhattan or in New York City and he's at my school sitting near me without me knowing it and talking about, and I'm like, get off me. Uh, you know, you're scared. You, oh yeah, these new kids ain't scared. What's up, mom? If my mom or daddy showed up at a place where I know I am not supposed to be, we went, even though I was an ex-pharmaceutical salesman, everything in me got tense. <laughs> everything. And my father stayed cool. Go on home, I'll meet you there. That one block walk took 30 minutes. <laughs> One day my daddy showed up, shocked me, walked into the house. He said, now, because I was fake sleeping, because when you know you're in trouble. See, I ain't got no help when you know you're in trouble. I'm going to preach and let y'all out of here. But when you know you're really in trouble, you done cleaned the house, cut the lights off, went in the back room. Look at some of these fake thugs not clapping. Fake. Let me drop some of y'all off where I know you won't last. Right, and I went in there and I'm laying down and parents are smart. My father said, now, if I found out that Todd changed this grade on this report card, I'm gonna beat him to death. If that boy act like he passed math. And I heard him, but I was still faking sleep. Like, what's my next move? Because I had already changed the grade. I'm going to see it with me, because back then it was numbers. So it was a 65, and I make the 6 an 8. And I rounded it around. I think I'm the only one. What I knew I was going to get a very strategic, intense beating because I had already altered the grade. I was not saved at all, never did I try to say I was saved when I wasn't saved, but I was always respectful and mannerable. These kids done lost that too.
Even if you're mad at your parents, you say good morning. You say, excuse me. You say, can I eat? You don't just go in my refrigerator. My kids grown right now. They walk in my house, but if they come in after my lights are out, the same gun I use on trespassers. Oh yeah, I'm licensed and I let them know, Dad, you know it's me. No, it ain't, cause it's two in the morning. It can't be you. But I wasn't saved, but I believe I heard the voice of God when I wasn't saved help me not get that intense beating. Because I did get a whooping, but it was the quickest and easiest whooping I ever had for sinning or trespassing against my father, for trying to rewrite the story, for lying, trying to fool who puts food on my table Clothes on my, I can't get no, but clothes on my back. That voice that I believe was God back then when I was 16 simply said this to me. Wake up now and tell him you changed the grade. First, I ignored the voice. I said, he's going to kill me. He said, I'm telling you, if you confess it before he see it, Oh, y'all miss it. It will lighten the penalty. I see my young man clapping. I've been waiting on one person, but five of y'all not going to say amen on this. Some of you going to act real funny, but the truth is some of you are getting a worse beating because you refuse to admit it. you be like, well, I did it. It's already done. What's done is done. Might as well get what I get. You're going to go to jail for 30 years simply for not knowing how to throw yourself on the mercy. Oh, y'all don't want me to preach of the court. Then you're going to come out with tattoos talking about, I was a G up in there. You were a girl up in there. You was a G, all right. G-I-R-L. If you come out of jail with your pants sagging, sagging pants mean you were the bottom girl. See, you're dealing with an ex-gangster from Brownsville, Brooklyn, who sold drugs and did everything. You can't fool me. No real man that's successful is trying to show their fruit of the looms walking down the block talking about I'm going to be a millionaire. And any parent that raised your child like that should be going to jail in the next cell with your children. When I grew up, it was simple. Brush your teeth. Go in there and goggle. Let me smell your underarm. Pull your pants up. Tie your shoes. Comb your hair. Now y'all leave with no hair comb. Talking about it's a style. It is ridiculous. It is unemployable. It is unsuccessful. It is just ridiculous. Have you ever did it before? Of course, I once was young. But now I'm old. Not real old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Can I get Bible help? Nor it see. I got up and I told my dad, I said, hello. He said, hey, I said, he said, where your report card? I said, you won't see it. I changed the grade. He said, what? I said, I heard you when you came in. I was trying to sleep. I made the six or five. He said, well, I would have never known because I didn't call nobody. But what don't catch up with you today? See, y'all missing it. And some of us continue to sin because if we get away with what we do, we think God is saying, I'm okay. My father beat me and he beat me less and had to walk out because when he got ready to beat me, 
Normally he waits and you know how parents do. They be like, go in the room, I'll be in there. And every second you like. So I was just stupid. I said, you need to come on now because I'm trying to go to sleep. I just come beat me. You acting like a terrorist. My father came and said, what? I said, beat me now. Well, let me get my clothes off. No, no, beat me while you got your clothes on. Then I turned around, the boy started laughing. He hit me a few times, walked out. I said, now you can't come back in. <laughs> the beating start now when it in and in. See, some of you don't have a relationship with God enough that he'll hear what you have to say. And sometimes he'll back up off you because all he wanted was the truth. Dr. Pastor, may I also admit, then I'm going to a scripture to shock everybody. Can I also admit for 10 of you that are pushing me so wonderfully to where I feel valued, that I still, when I look over my life, know that I have been paid for all the wrong I've done. And some of you have not paid for all the wrong no one, no one knows you've done. Let me throw this out there for fun. I was going to keep it real spiritual, but I'm going to now take my risk for the other generation and give this ex ex example or this disclaimer. And, and I'm going to make this statement, and it's profound and it's true, and uh, I won't try to dwell upon it long, but let me say this. Most of you in here that are holy, quote-unquote holy, the ones that speak in tongues and quicken and love God and dress right and don't reveal skin, most of people like you are the most horniest cussing people I have ever seen in my entire life. Now, I've had a mother, a grandmama, great-grandmama, I know them all, and all of the older ones were holy, but when they got with their favorite grandchild, baby, if I was her, that man would have never got away. Don't tell. All of y'all acting like you exempt from error. That's the worst posture you could ever take as a person of influence in another generation's life. 